Hello and welcome. My name is David Greenberg and I am a multimedia artist. I'm a video content creator and I'm a teacher of natural law. My website, freedomvibe.art. That's freedomvibe.art. You can find all of my work as well as the work of others. Great resources there if you want to learn more about human consciousness, natural law, the occult, and freedom. I have a very special presentation for you today. I'm calling this a Declaration of Sovereignty. And the subtitle is An Act of Speaking the Truth Publicly with Courage. And that is, in fact, exactly what I'm going to do today. So what exactly is a declaration of sovereignty? What do I mean by this? Well, if you've followed my work at all, then you probably have noticed that I like to break down words in terms of their etymology, in terms of the origin of the word. And the reason I do that, the reason I started doing that is I have learned through my own study that words themselves often have clues to understand a deeper meaning behind what we're saying, right? So embedded in the word, if we kind of dig in and understand where that word comes from, we can really see the deeper meaning and that helps us to clarify these terms that we're using. So let's look at the first word declaration. That of course comes from the verb declare and the verb declare is actually comes from the Latin. It's a compound word, so it comes from the prefix D, D-E, which means of or from or concerning, and the verb clarare, which means to make clear or to clarify. So from that etymology, we can see that a declaration simply is a statement that wishes to clarify or intends to clarify something that is already true. So a declaration is not making something true, it's simply clarifying the truth itself. Now let's understand the second word, sovereignty. Sovereignty comes from the word sovereign. This again comes from the Latin. The word has changed a little bit, and some people might be tripped up by that. See, you can't be stuck in your left brain and, and thinking that just because it doesn't match the, the exact origin of the words that it's not derived from that. So the words probably intentionally have been changed over time, but sovereign comes from two Latin words. One is super, which means above and beyond, and regnum, which means rule or rulership. So sovereignty simply is the state of being free from or not subject to rule. In other words, you're above rule. You're above rule, you're beyond rule. You're not subject to being ruled by others. So you might think, why, if something is already true, why do I need to declare it? What's, what's the point? Well, one thing that I have learned and you may have learned as well, is that it is very important to keep speaking the truth continually aloud, publicly and frequently. And this is particularly true when you live, as we do, in a world that is filled with lies and deception. It's not enough that the truth is the truth, we need to actually speak it. So one of the main reasons why I do, I'm do i doing this presentation, and frankly, any of the presentations that I do, is because I recognize that it's very important to speak the truth aloud in order to continually expose others to the truth. And then you'll, you know, when you're exposed to the truth, you're going to be able to decide for yourself whether it's true or not, but you have the opportunity to hear it. Another reason why I'm doing this is because I, I want to serve as an example, right? And I do consider the, the entire body of my work as an example of courage, but I think this presentation in particular is a demonstration of me coming out and saying things, even if I get hate for them, even if 
it literally seems like the whole world is against me. And that's not going to stop me from doing this because I know this is true. I've come to understand that what I'm saying here is true. And I know that we live in a world where many people, I want to say most people, but we'll just say many people don't even recognize this truth. In fact, many people are working very hard to undermine the truth of this and to get people to believe that the opposite is true. So I want to be that example. And if I'm the only person in the world, if I were the only person in the world doing that, I would still do it because I consider it to be that important. Great. So I didn't want to get too caught up in preliminaries, but I thought it was important to clarify a few things before we actually get to the declaration. So let's dive in and start the declaration. My name is David Greenberg, and this is my declaration of sovereignty. Nobody owns me or my property, regardless of their claim to the contrary. See, and I also want to just mention that as I go through this, this declaration, I'm going to say each aspect of it aloud, and then I'm going to provide some commentary to kind of help clarify, because I think that that's going to help you as a student to understand the deeper meaning behind each aspect and why I'm saying this. Again, I'll go through each sec section, I'll go through each statement, and then I'll clarify it. So just to repeat this declaration, nobody owns me or my property. Nobody owns me or my property, regardless of their claim to the contrary. That part is very important because there are many people in the world who will claim that either they or somebody else owns me or my property. And they are wrong. They are incorrect. And that's what I'm here to tell you. Any claim of ownership against me or my property in whole or in part, whether it's a part of what I own or the entirety, is illegitimate and is denied, denied. And as we get further in this presentation, I will explain further how I will go about denying that claim and how you can do the same. I am the sole owner of my life. I'm the sole owner of my mind, my body, and any physical possessions that I may acquire in this lifetime. I'm the sole owner. Nobody else owns it. In fact, nobody else may use it rightfully without my permission. This is something that a lot of people are not do not understand. And this is, again, a reason why I'm doing this presentation. Many people, maybe even most people, do not understand that they are the rightful owners of their life. Their life is their property. Your life is your property, as is mine. The same thing is true with your mind. Regardless of what you think about your mind, regardless of what you think it is, you own it. It's yours. Same thing is true for your body. Yes, when you die, your body will, will cease to exist. But for the duration of your lifetime, of any lifetime, you are the sole and rightful owner of your body. And I am the sole and rightful owner of my body. And any physical possessions that you may, that, that I, you or I may rightfully acquire as part of our life. So this goes to say that everything that I own, including my life, my mind, my body, my property, is mine and only mine. And I'm the one that gets to decide how it's used. So this is Jonathan Frenzel of Im Lichte, my German project, and Light on Us, my English project, where I speak about natural law, true freedom, morality, and the ending of all human slavery. I'm the sponsor of this presentation today of David Greenberg and his project freedomvibe.art. I really want to say thank you, David, for doing the great work and all the stuff that you do on a daily basis. And for you out there who's watching this 
presentation. Stay till the end and enjoy. Thank you very much. I'm also here today to declare that I agree to fulfill all of the requirements for being sovereign. And yes, there are requirements. See, this is, again, something that we really need to understand is, yes, you and I, we are born sovereign. We are born with the natural right, and it is our birthright to be sovereign. However, we have to claim that sovereignty. We have to activate it. It's an activation. It's bringing it online. It's enabling it. And in order to activate that sovereignty, we need to agree to fulfill the requirements, right? Again, this is something a lot of people are going to struggle with, that this is not a freebie. There, there is nothing in life that is free in the sense that you don't have to give something in order to take. You always have to. There is always a requirement, okay? So I'm here to say that I'm, I'm agreeing wholeheartedly to fulfill all of the requirements in order to claim my sovereignty. Now, what are those requirements? Fortunately, there are not many. And they're actually very simple to understand. The first requirement, which we could say is the most important, is responsibility. So I'm here to say, I'm here to declare that I do accept complete responsibility for all of my actions and all of my behaviors and their consequences. I'm not shirking this. I'm not half in. I'm not, you know, tipping, dipping my toes into the pool, so to speak. I accept full responsibility, knowing that that is a requirement to be sovereign. You don't own me. You don't own my property. You don't get any say in what I do. You don't get to tell me what to do. And I'm not going to do anything unless I agree to do it. This is foundational to understand. And that's true of me. With It's true of, of my relationship with you and with anyone. And that's true of your relationship with anyone else. You don't get to tell anyone what to do. And nobody gets to tell you what to do, provided that you accept the requirements for being sovereign. And we've already seen one of them. We'll talk more about that as we go through this presentation. Just to kind of really, really drive this home, you have no right to make me do anything so long as I don't initiate violence. You have no right to make me do anything so long as I don't initiate violence. What is violence? Folks, I've talked about this extensively on my platform. I've talked about natural law. I've talked about human rights. I have a recent presentation that I did that I'll link somewhere here. It's called Knowing Your Rights, A Most Valuable Lesson. And if you haven't watched it, you may want to pause this presentation and go back and watch that one because I think you can consider it prerequisite material. And I made that presentation because I realized that most people, and I would include myself in the past in that group, do not really understand what our actual rights are as human beings. And of course, by extension, most people don't understand what is the actual definition of violence or causing harm. So go back and watch that. But basically what I'm saying here is as long as I'm not causing harm, as long as I'm not trying to initiate violence against anyone, then you have no right to tell me, to make me do anything against my free will. Now here comes another requirement for being sovereign. I'm going to defend myself. I'm go I am and I will defend myself when someone attempts to steal my property or make me do something I don't want to do, coerce me or even try to deceive me and steal the truth away. 
and I'll use any means necessary appropriate to the situation, including deadly force. Yes, that is, you heard me correctly. I will use deadly force if necessary to defend and protect my own life. Doesn't mean I need to use the deadly force or that we need to use deadly force every time we defend ourselves. Of course not. But as the old expression goes, I reserve the right to do so. And I am in my right if my life is being threatened. And again, this is something a lot of people are going to struggle with. And there's going to be a lot of apologetics. You know, a lot of people are going to apologize for strap, you know, stripping away people's right to defend themselves because of agendas. And that's all wrong and incorrect and immoral. The only thing that is true is that you and I and every person, every human being, in fact, every being has a natural and inherent right to defend itself through whatever means necessary. And if in the course of defending oneself, the attacker is killed, then no violence. That was not violence. That was rightfully done in self-defense. And this is another requirement for being sovereign because there are people and force, even forces of nature and uh, circumstances that will threaten our lives, that will threaten our property, whether intentionally or otherwise. And if we intend to survive, we will need to defend ourselves. It's a natural right and it's a requirement for sovereignty. I also want to say here something very important, and I'll explain a little bit about this. People have probably heard the term debt slave or debt slavery. And one of the main ways that modern institutions enslave people is by indebting them, by creating immoral and illegitimate debts, financial debts, debts that were created under some kind of deception and then are enforced through the legal system, through coercion and duress. So I'm here to say publicly, clearly, and definitively, without hesitation, that I am renouncing, I renounce and repudiate any such debts that may be attached to me. In particular, I renounce and repudiate any financial debts that were bound to me through deception. And folks, the entire monetary system is a big deception. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say that straight up. And if you don't understand that, you should go read a book called The Creature from Jekyll Island or go do some research on this. You'll need to discover the truth of this for yourself. But I'm, I'm just telling you that I already know that these centrally controlled monetary systems are all based on a deception. I already know this. So when someone comes along and claims that they can steal my property, my rightful property, because of a claim of a debt which is immoral and illegitimate, I'm saying, no, you are incorrect. And I renounce that and I repudiate it. And again, going back to what I just said, I'm going to defend myself and my property through any means necessary, even against your wrongful claim of ownership that you bring against me through this ongoing deception. So I ha I'm not indebted to anyone through this deceptive system. The only kind of debt that I have is one that I rightfully make, not through deception of my own free will and accord, and based on a correct and accurate understanding of what exactly I am indebting myself to. And of course, I'm going to avoid making those kind of debts to the greatest extent possible. And I encourage you to, to do the same, of course. So my repudiation of all debts, of course, and claim, it includes any of these claims of interest payments, back payments of any amount for any money in quotation marks. And I'll explain that in a second for any money that was manufactured in computer systems and then, quote, loaned to me. This imaginary money, which only exists as a mental construct. And 
the topic of money is a big topic. I'm not going to be able to cover it in this presentation without going on a big tangent. So I encourage you to go back and do some research. Um, in particular, if you want to really understand the difference between true money, true currency, and this deceptive manufactured money that that most people in the world chase, a great place to start is the podcast series, What on Earth is Happening by Mark Passio. It's a very extensive podcast series, but in the course of going through that, one of the things he covers is the difference between true money, true currency, and the fake shit that we all, that many people worship in this world, the God of money. So I want to encourage you to go back and research that, but suffice it to say that anyone who comes along and claims that I owe them this, you know, this fake money and that they can somehow take my property or claim something against me because of that, they're wrong. They're wrong, they're incorrect, and I will and I will put a stop to it through any means necessary. And I'm here to say, in the first part of putting a stop to it is me coming here on, on this video and saying in no uncertain terms that I repudiate such a claim. It's ridiculous. You're ridiculous for making such a claim, and you know it. And you know exactly who you are that I'm talking to. So get over it. These debts are all immoral. They are immoral. They are wrong because they're based on deception and coercion. The only law that exists in creation, the only enforceable law is natural law. And under natural law, these debts are null and void because something that is based on a lie and deception can never be right. It can never be right, not even once. So all these debts they're nullified. They're null and void. It's as though they never existed. End of story, period, the end. No police officer, off I, sir, no police off I, sir, or government, quote unquote, official of any capacity has any authority over me whatsoever, even if they claim to. And folks, just like the image in this slide, this is exactly what I think of you if you make a claim against me or my property. You're a clown. You're a clown. And really, the only person that you're clowning is yourself because you have to be lying to yourself at a very deep level in order to think that you own me or part of my property or any of my property. Complete clown. And I'm here to tell you that you're wrong and you don't and you know you don't and that's what makes you a clown for making such a claim. So nobody, no officer, no official, no immigration officer, no TSA officer, no, no sheriff, no police officer, um, no military personnel, um, no prime minister or member of parliament, no... No official in any capacity has any authority over me whatsoever, period, the end. Get over it. And if you think you do, you're wrong. And I'm going to defend myself in order to enforce that. And you should too. These people are clowns. They are clowning you by claiming to own you. You need to wake up to that. If you want to be free, if you want to continue to be a slave, keep believing the clowns. But if you want to actually be free, you need to wake up to this. I'm also here to say that I am going to exercise my natural and inherent right to travel and explore, to travel this world that I was born on, born into, as is my natural right. And I don't need your permission to do that. I don't need anyone's permission to do that. The only thing that I respect, of course, is, again, I'm not harming anyone in the course of doing this travel, and specifically, I'm not going to trespass on anyone's private property in the course of traveling. I'm not going to enter anyone's private abode without being invited. As long as I do that, 
I'm completely in my right and I am and will continue to ex exercise my right to travel freely in this world, which is my natural and inherent right as a sovereign being. Folks, this next point is so important that this we could have a separate discussion just about this one. So let me just say it definitively. I'm always free to act, to, to make the choice and to act per my choice, even when I make the wrong decision. Even when I make the wrong decision, when I say the wrong decision, when I do something that either intentionally or invariably causes some harm, either to myself or to others. And see, folks, a lot of people are not gonna get this. See, we're here to learn and grow. We're here to learn and grow in this world. We're here to potentially make mistakes so that we can learn. Ideally, we wouldn't make we would make fewer mistakes and we would learn quickly from our mistakes. Absolutely. So that we suffer less. But if you if you don't have the choice to make the wrong decision, how in the world are you ever going to learn and grow? You're not. It's impossible. We need to choose to do the right thing a free will. There needs to exist the possibility of making the wrong choice. So a lot of people are not going to understand this, I want, but I want to invite you to go deeper into this and really contemplate it. Meditate on it if you need to. But as a sovereign, I, get to, I always get to make the choice, even if I make a bad decision, even if I make the wrong choice. That's it. Now, what is the rightful relationship that you and I have? Well, it's very simple. We can work together. And I welcome collaboration. We can collaborate. We can work together. We can put our, force, put our strengths together, our intellect, our knowledge and understanding, our abilities. We can do anything so long as... We do it voluntarily. In other words, you agree voluntarily without coercion and I agree voluntarily without any kind of coercion. And as long as there is, as long as what we're actually doing is moral, is right and moral, and we're not attempting to deceive anyone else or cause any kind of harm ourselves. So as long as it's all moral and right and good and it's voluntary, we can do anything. And that's part of the beautiful part of life. You know, this is how we can coexist as sovereign beings. We can each be sovereign of ourselves and yet we can collaborate and we can create amazing things together. And I, I actually hope we do. I, I really enjoy collaborating with people. I've had great collaborations. I've mentioned them before. Um, and I hope to have more great collaborations because I'm not going to be able to, to do I'm going to be always limited as one person in terms of what I can actually achieve. So I actually think it's a great thing that we can collaborate, but that's, it can only be done through voluntary, through mutual voluntary behavior. That's it. And, and morally right behavior. Now, as I've already said, my body is my rightful property and what that also means is I can consume anything I desire. I can ingest or consume anything I want, even things that could potentially hurt me in some way. I can smoke a cigarette. I can smoke two or three cigarettes. I can consume drugs or psychedelic substances. I can even eat things which are not very good for me. Now, do I think these are good ideas? Probably not. I think anything that, that could be considered a vice or harmful to self should be, I think it's prudent to limit that. I don't recommend that. Uh, and I've had to change, I've personally had to change my relationship with many substances, including tobacco and, and uh, cannabis and others, 
by first denying it and then maybe being addicted to it and then denying again and then creating a healthy relationship. So I've had to go through all that to learn how to create a better relationship with what I put in my body. And I think that that is good. We should do that. But ultimately, even if I take something in my body, which is harmful, I have a right to do that at all times. And nobody has the right to come along and legislate and say, oh, you know, it's wrong for you to put this in your body because of what might happen. Incorrect. Because you're stealing away, you're attempting to steal away the person's right to learn and grow by even by doing things which are not ideal and to figure it out. So I'm here to tell you, my body is my property. You ain't got no say in what I put into it. None whatsoever, period. Now, even though I've already said all this on this presentation, some clown somewhere is going to come along and say, oh, it's just, you know, you're just preaching or just because you think you said something, or just because you think you said something, you didn't make it right, baby. Because there are clowns in the world and they are clowns. They're really, really ass clowns. Excuse the explicit language, but they are fucking dumb as bricks, ass clowns. And they can make whatever claims they want. They can come along and try to, you know, use their little little left brain arguments to, you know, use their little convoluted mental gymnastics, whatever they try to do. And everything I've said today is still true. And I know it. And even deep inside, even they know it, even if they claim to the contrary. So, just like I said in the beginning, this declaration is not to create something that is true, it's simply to acknowledge the truth. It's simply to speak the truth aloud out of respect for it, out of acknowledgement of the truth, out of reverence for the truth, and out of alignment with true principles. That's it. So go ahead and blah, 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 clowns. Go ahead. I'm still, tr I'm still right and I'm still speaking the truth. Now here's a big part of why I did this. Everything I've said about myself today, this can apply to you as well. You can have all of this. You can be sovereign. It is your birthright, just like it's mine. See, in this presentation, I talked about myself, but this really isn't about me. I'm just an example here. I'm just the one who has the courage to get up and say things that most people won't say. But everything I've said about myself applies to you as well. If you claim it. That last point is really important. And just like I said earlier, I'll come back, I'll, I'll reinforce this point. You can activate your sovereignty. You can claim your birthright. But the only way to do it, there's no other way. You've got to agree to the requirements, the ones that I've already discussed in this presentation. And if you need to go back and rewatch it in order to really capture those requirements, go ahead. Watch this presentation as many times as you need to to really get it. That would be true for any of my presentations. Go back and watch as many times as you need to. Sometimes just listening and watching once isn't enough. I understand. I've had, I've been working on myself in this regard for years now, for years, and I'll never stop doing this works as long as I'm alive. It'll, it'll always be a part of what I'm doing. So you can be sovereign too. And I, and I hope, you know, it's your choice in the end. I can't make you do anything, but I hope you will claim that sovereignty because when more people do, when you do and more people do, the world becomes a better place. And that, that's the kind of world I do want to live in. And that's a big motivator for me doing this. So if you're struggling with this, and some people will be, then I have something that can really help you. It's called the seven day mental freedom challenge. This is a 
challenge that I've had on my website for several months now. I created it out of, through all the work that I do and specifically through some conversations I've had with specific individuals who, through the course of that conversation, helped me to understand where in this process people are struggling. Where, where are they struggling to really grasp the principles that drive our sovereignty, our, our innate freedom? and our right to be free. So I put together this seven day mental freedom challenge and I did it this way because I wanted to create something that was accessible, that was somewhat limited in time, encapsulated that you could just kind of take on with a, with a commitment. Of course, it takes a commitment, but not an overwhelming commitment. In other words, a one week commitment, seven days just to see what you can do. So I'll provide a link somewhere or you can just go to my website. You can discover there the seven day mental freedom challenge. So I want to invite you to check that out. That's really the best f completely free resource that I offer to really help you claim your sovereignty. And I want to thank you so much for your time and your attention today for sticking with me through this entire presentation for hearing me out. And hopefully you got something out of it as well. So thank you very much. I appreciate you as always. And I'll see you again very soon.